So we're here for a seminar to talk about gender. So I'm Dr. Caroline Ozella and I've been teaching here at SOAS since 2000. Um, one of the things that I teach is the course on anthropology of sex, gender, sexuality. So one of the things I wanted to start off with is that a common idea about gender is that it's a binary, isn't it? Most people, if you ask them, what is gender? they will begin to say, what kinds of things might they say? If we said to them, we went out on the street and asked people, what is gender? What kind of answers might we get? The whole yeah. binary of male, female, masculine, yeah. feminine. Yeah. 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 But it seems to be like people see gender as constructed. I think to a certain extent, yes, but there's always that like tendency to, to um, associate femininity to women in different mm. degrees or masculine to men in different degrees um, yeah. and justifying that in like levels of hormones like this yeah. Yeah. biological or something. Yeah, I mean at the same time there's also genitals, I mean yeah. there's yeah. fingers and the vagina. And yeah, people will thing. drag it back to that won't they? Yeah. There's, a video, there's a video that we have up on Moodle in the SOAS gender group where um, gender, sex gender activist Del Grace Volcano goes out on the streets of London asking people what makes a man? How do you know a man? And most people's first answer is exactly the penis. They come to that. And so then Dell pushes them and says, well, what about if you had a terrible, terrible accident and lost your penis? <laughs> like, would you still be a man? And that makes people stop and think about what else is going into gender. I think, as you say, people are aware that there's a degree of social construction and fabrication, but they will bring it back to the body mm -hmm. and often to the genitals, yeah. Sometimes slightly more sophisticated, like chromosomes. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love the way like people are suddenly like experts in biology when it comes to these conversations yeah. sometimes yeah. as well. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, it's biological. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> what, what kind of work does that do? When people say, well, it's biology, what sort of work is that doing? I think it's also trying to justify a certain right. uh, behavior or talking about, for instance, a certain feminine behavior or like, uh, right. hysteria is often also yeah. uh, referred back to it, like, oh yeah, that has to be with her hormones or she's on a yes. period or whatever. Yes. There's all these biological explanations for behavior. Yeah, yeah. Which I think yeah. Is, yeah. yeah, we hear a lot of that, don't we? I think the work it's definitely doing is naturalizing because biology is seen as natural yeah. as like the, gr the mm. you know, grounding point, starting point, yeah. mm. and therefore it, it almost ends the discussion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, shut up, we can't talk mm. any more about this. There it is. Mm. You can't argue with it. It's mm. natural. Yeah. Yeah, what is also naturalizes <coughs> the, uh, yeah, the, the way gender is not neutral but hierarchical, obviously. Right. It's not like... Femininity is not just femininity, but it's inferior to okay. masculine ideas of masculinity. I think. Okay. So we have a we have a drag back to the body, a drag back to a clear binary, mm -hmm. and a suggestion of a hierarchy between the terms in the binary. Perhaps. Yeah. What about that binary then? What about that? Yeah, yeah. 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 Should we, we just brainstorm a few examples of it? We've had kind of women are hysterical and at the mercy of their hormones and this kind of stuff. Any, any other examples? Can anyone drag in? Yeah. Well, I, I, was, I, was, I was at a cafe the other night um, and like, we were talking about um, this person's sister who is like um, chess, like, like she plays professional mm -hmm. chess and like, and like he told me that even at that level like, uh, there's, like, a gender divide in, like, the right. chess leagues. Right. And, like, it's, like, completely ridiculous. But, like, the like the science kind of just gets, like, warped into in reinforcing this gender binary in professional chess for reasons that, like, don't even exist because of anything, like, arising in the individual competitors. It, it, it's just, like, they, they notice a difference in how certain people perform. Um, that's completely socialized, like because of what, like a chess league. And it's good as a natural difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else? Other examples of the binary. What about clothes shops? That's one of my yeah. pet ones. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. The toilets. Isn't it? Toilets. Yeah, public toilets, clothes shops. What else? Anywhere else? I'm thinking about like 
clothes for little children because I have little oh, siblings yes. and I have yeah. girls having really small um, fit and small jeans that are really yeah. tight as a, at a young age, like five yeah. year olds, and having yeah. boys that have more baggy stuff. Okay, more comfortable. Yeah, stuff. and that's restricting yeah. mobility already yeah. at okay. that that's, age. That okay. is, I was exactly. I was going to say like yeah. a really similar thing. I was trying to buy um, clothes for my little sisters, um, and like the functions and like performances assumed like within within like the design of the clothes, like like all the like girls' clothes were like pretty dresses and pink and like you, you know like yes. my little sisters loved like climbing trees and getting dirty and like they couldn't do that. And, like, it was like a really restrictive. It was designed in a really like restrictive way that didn't yeah. enable like action and mobility and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There are also different doctors, different right. types of doctors for okay. women. Yeah. Or yeah. for yeah, the normal doctors that everybody can go to, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So like, yeah. yeah. Any more? I was I was involved in um, an interesting conversation on Facebook yesterday yeah. uh, mm-hmm. in this group on electronic music, and the question was why are mo- are there mostly men doing electronic music and why are so few women doing it right um and some of the answers were really interesting one of them actually said that um women were uh innately less techy and so that's why guys kind of got into it quicker and yeah i don't know just yeah 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 yeah. absolutely we see a lot of as you're you're pulling out the idea of social construction aren't you and socialization and the ways in which those things get put back as natural, just innate, rather than as something that's a, a social product. What about this binary then? Most people are going to drag it back to the binary and say, well, there is male, female, there are two genders. Anybody got any experience or reading or ideas about, that would challenge that idea that it's, that it's a binary? Well, I've noticed that in my own community of like Asian people, like, um, that, like, the concern about women being capable in, like, the technical sciences and, like, computer programming and stuff is, like, subverted in a really weird way, because, because like, it's a tendency in Pakistani patriarchy, especially, to pressure the daughters into doing exactly those things. Like, my sister's a botanist, like, my cousin's an engineer, like, um, a bunch of my other co- cousins are doctors, like, and that's not a thing. But, but, like, the patriarchal structure is still there, but it's almost as though, like, the racial aspect of it just kind of, like, completely transforms what happens. Okay, let's think about that. Yeah, let's think about the way in which a gender position, then. We're already beginning now to get a bit anthropological here. And think about the ways in which what counts as being a woman or being a man might be culturally variable. Can anybody speak to any more examples of that. So being techie here is assumed to be that's a guy thing, yeah. right? That's, but that's coming from a very specific cultural location and historical location. The idea that being techie is a guy thing, here we've got a pushback on that. It's not necessarily a guy thing. So mm-hmm. in this case, something else gives you your qualification, your status for womanliness. Yeah. And we would want as anthropologists to find out what that is. Other examples? Um, I have a, like, a vivid example with my mum mm-hmm. um, who doesn't shave her legs and yeah. for her because we are originally from Ghana. Yeah. For having hair on your body is yeah. something that is feminine in Ghana, yeah. Yeah. which is the opposite yeah. in, in yeah. European context where yeah. women are yeah. supposed to shave their body hair. Yeah. That, that's a sign of femininity. Yeah. 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 You can even have a moustache, that's yeah, something yeah. that is yeah. sexy. Yeah, well, that's not really detract from no. the feminine. Yeah. Any more examples? I mean, even on the biological discourse, if you'd say, okay, what okay. makes a woman biologically is that she can right. uh, bear children, okay. but that's not true for all women no. either. Mm-hmm. So no. even there are different, um, yeah. Yeah, differences, biological differences that right. some women might have. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, not, yeah. The, not everybody is pregnant all the time or <laughs> yeah. or even main mother to mother biologically at any point in their life. Yeah. I guess one article that may um, stuck to us was we read something about how sex was constructed like it's not oh, just yeah. the moral aspects of um, mother um, here and that. Yeah. Oh, here's your baby girl and how you socially construct that afterwards, but also Doctors yeah. surgically constructing, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, to yeah. kind of 
erase any kind of yeah. ambiguities. Yeah. So yeah. That's awesome. yeah, there's naturally occurring biological intersex. Does anyone mm. want to speak about that? I know some of you guys have read about it. Anyone want to speak to that? The way that we surgically intervene upon biological intersex. Um, well, at birth, there can be yeah. a variety of different genitals. You know, it's not yeah. just straightforwardly yeah. penis yeah. or vagina. It's not you know, obviously, there can be, yeah. yeah, a smaller penis or yeah. just slightly different vagina. And so, yeah. many times, doctors just take the liberty to yeah. uh, do surgical operations on newborn babies yeah. in order to fit them yeah. neatly into yeah. the box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we only we only tolerate kind of two very clearly demarcated bodies, but in nature, nature has natural variation. Um, in culture, we have kind of rigid boxes, and we'll make sure that nature fits into culture, and then appears to be natural. Yeah, which I find interesting that the yeah. this natural discourse is still more dominant because yeah. you can also see that you know now in some countries like Germany, a third gender is allowed or a third right. sex, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. can yeah. be crossed, yeah. but it's it is still based on on how you're born, like the right. the biological. Um, um, yeah, the biological qualities right. that the baby has, and not okay. on their personality, so right. to say. So I think right. it's still interesting how you can cross that you can cross that third category at birth, mm -hmm. but not later on when you decide right. how right. you want to perform that. Or yeah, yeah. And I think that's like a point at which it intersects with sexuality quite a lot. Right. It's like this uh, projecting like sort of like cultural ideas or values onto like nature as well like mm -hmm. that often like sexuality is like mm. well you know monkeys have sex in this way then yeah, like yeah. humans yeah, and, yeah. like this sort of like idea of natural order yeah. occurring prior to like any sort yeah. of cultural yeah. ideas yeah. or constructs yeah. and then as we've kind of pointed out already in the room an awful lot of us sort of suddenly become experts on animal behaviour or biology the minute we start talking about sex, gender, um, but we really actually don't know what we're talking about. When we go and look at the biology, on our course we have a little look at some of the biology, both primate studies, um, animal studies, but also um, biology of chromosomes and hormones. We find out that the picture is really absolutely not as we would be imagining it, yeah. Mm. But it's uh, it's just that placeholder, it's just that really quick. It's natural, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't argue. Mm -hmm. There we are, yeah. end of discussion. The binary, we've still not undone it. Let's undo it a bit more. Well, one, one aspect is, and this is a new, very new thing, is yes. with computers, like right. with the internet, when, yeah. when we talk on oh, forums or whatever, yeah. um, we kind of take on, we can take on a different mm -hmm. identity yeah. in which yeah. Who we are, who, our, our gender, our social yeah. gender is completely relevant. Yeah. So you know that already yeah. in itself goes to show that yeah. there are ways of going beyond the binary. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And people are able and want to think themselves out of yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Position themselves as a different online. Yeah. In many places, we have examples of people who live beyond the binary and are not mm -hmm. pushed into a binary system. We have different gender regimes, don't we? In different places, different historical moments. Um, different cultural locations. Does anyone, can anyone remember any other examples? The Zenith in Oman. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's an example of, um, that gender doesn't have to be stable. The Hijra is somebody who is in a specific space and stays in that space. But there are examples of switching gender. Yeah, you know, you're something up to the age of 12 and then you become something else and then you may become something else. So. It's another another legacy that we are a bit stuck with is the idea that people have a stable. Like, yeah, I feel like often in conversations or about gender and stuff, there's an erasure of like gender fluidity or like yes. like being non-binary yeah. or like, yeah. but particularly like being gender fluid. Yeah, um, yeah, and like often as well, like uh, like people will assume that with like trans identities that like you can be like femme, trans man, or like yeah. you can yeah. like, yeah, like there can be like real yeah. fluidity in those, yeah. in those respects. Yeah. Well. yeah, I feel yeah. like um, also coming back to dressing, that like the way mm. you dress, that I have encountered that so many times with friends and also mm. with myself, like people who, um, or women who have always dressed, like always wearing trousers, shirts, nothing, no dresses, no skirts, 
that they then they wanted to wear these dresses and skirts, but mm. they didn't feel comfortable anymore expressing yeah. that feminine mm. identity because they were not associated with that by their mm. by their yeah. friends or whatever. Yeah. And also the other way around, if a girl is brought up always wearing really feminine clothes, then not feeling so comfortable. Well, maybe actually more comfortable the other way around. But yeah. So I think even just on these small levels of changing your style, uh, that always seems quite important for people as well. Yeah. yeah. You brought in a relationship between gendering and desire. So you said that perhaps gender is actually doing some work to do with producing sexuality or sexual identities mm -hmm. or sexual behaviour. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can think about that for a moment. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. Well, I think one of the obvious ones is masculine women are mm. seem to be sexually deviant and not heterosexual, um, yeah. and the same yeah. with the feminine men. And yeah. how yeah. how does that fracturing of the gender translate into equal, yeah. not sexually yeah. heterosexual, or uh, yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah the, there's also I feel like a strong intersection with. Um, it, there's also a racialized uh, yeah. discourse around that. So yeah. seeing, um, yeah, I don't know. I just read an article on Hollywood and uh, othering in Hollywood, uh, othering the Middle Eastern Hollywood, and how uh, Middle Eastern men are seen as like the the rapists, but at the same time very uh, feminine and yeah. uh, subordinate to the white yeah. masculine man. Yeah, and um, but then how. Or oriental women are these very uh, very sexualized uh, mm -hmm. they are very sexualized in a lot of movies so mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. that intersection as well yeah the hyper feminization mm -hmm. a lot has been written about this again about that connection somehow that we find again and again between uh, gender genderization we could say and racialization and there's an interesting set of literature on uh, colonial practices and on the production of the feminized Asian um, and the hyper-masculinized, brutish, uh, Arab or African man and the ways in which that played into colonial projects of domination. Mm -hmm. But I think we see the effects of that still with us now, don't we? Mm -hmm. It's not gone, yeah? Yeah, the, yeah. the notion of having to rescue... Um, uh, rescue Arabic women like, from oppressive yeah. uh, regimes in Afghanistan yeah. Yeah. and uh, yeah. yeah seen as so, as passive as yeah. hyper feminized and as mm. needing yeah needing yeah, the feminist rescue. obsession with unveiling and yeah yeah, yeah. 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 That's, oh dear yeah. Yeah, absolutely yeah which <laughs> plays into another modernist thing mm. that yeah. obsession with transparency yeah. to be seen and be clear yeah I think also it's kind of separate, but yeah. on desire, like there's sometimes a failure to acknowledge like the performative aspects of desire as well. Okay. Um, so you mean like being a sex worker, we should not necessarily um, translate that to be passive individuals mm -hmm. with no desire to fracture, or like the idea that sex workers are like fracturing their body and selling their body mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. rather than performing a sexual act, um, and that like. The assumption as well in a lot of like anti-sex work narratives that like um, it's always hetero like sexual acts within mm. occurring within sex work are like always heteronormative, yeah. um, and are like always some or, like often gendered as feminine, um, mm. although like mm -hmm. there's so yeah, much yeah. like gender ver like yeah. variation within sex work. Yeah. One of one of the people I studied this year um, is this Pakistani Islamist named Maldudi. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the one of the things that Maldudi says in this like weird little book called Social Systems of Islam that he released in like nineteen sixty, um, is that there's like an active sexual partner and a passive sexual partner and all of Pakistani Muslim social relations need to be centered on this idea of active and passive mm -hmm. sex, which is like a really interesting way to put it. Mm -hmm. that, that like, like it's not men and women at that mm -hmm. point. He yeah. says active yeah. and passive. Yeah. And then he and then he says that the different 
women and different men have different features that feed yeah. into that. But like, yeah. that's the central mechanism yeah. for the social yeah. system, yeah. Um, which is like important yeah, yeah. to be aware of. Yeah. yeah. So it's a system and a binary and a set of complementary, making a complementary pair, but not mm. necessarily yeah. anchored down to a bio set yeah. or gender mm. position. That's interesting, yeah. Anyone else want to say anything about acts rather than identities, maybe? Well, I guess queer theory okay, in yeah. general picked up on that yeah. as a critique of uh, identity politics. Yeah. Um, and yeah. saying yeah, how identities need to be separated from acts. And also yeah. identities have this like congealing as well, like without yeah. allowing for jer- like gender journeys or like sexual journeys. Yeah. Or, yeah. And yeah. 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 yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah, I think that's super important also when you talk about yeah. things like consent, that sexual acts can be, um, they can exist in one situation and then mm. they they don't they don't necessarily yeah. have to be like if you perform a certain yeah. sexual act that doesn't necessarily have to be applied on your everyday yeah. to your everyday yeah. life so that yeah. can be very yeah. separate and that can be if that is transgressed that can be also very harmful yeah for people yeah yeah and we have an idea that's come around of uh, homo normativity as well in which mm-hmm. we would we would perhaps get rid of that idea that necessarily heterosexuals are the sort of conforming, you know, marry two kids, mm. etc., um, side, and that being lesbian or gay or trans is necessarily some kind of radical <laughs> or challenging position. That we also have kind of queer, straight sex acts and things, and, mm. um, and very normative lesbian gay lives. So everything is kind of much more complicated in this room than it, than it is sometimes outside of it. But perhaps, I wonder if we can get to something way more complicated. <laughs> Let's see if we can get there. Because all, we've been talking a lot about human beings and about mm. society and socialisation um, and the ways in which humans present themselves or live themselves, experience their subjectivities and their identities. Have we perhaps, especially in the humanities and the social sciences, totally discounted an enormous part of the material world and the way in which that makes us and shapes us and is part of us? Well, there's this yeah. idea that we're actually cyborgs. <laughs> right, yeah, we're yeah. actually cyborgs. We've yeah. become cyborgs, or we've started to become cyborgs. Yeah. Um, it's this idea that uh, we should start looking beyond just the limits of what is human and start looking at the post-human and all of that. Yeah. Um, and one of the ways in which this works with kind of gender and sexuality is yeah. uh, with social scientists looking at um, the effect of various technological prosthetic add-ons that we put onto our bodies. So like yeah. you know, Viagra is an example that enhances yeah. masculinity and yeah. at the same time reinforces a kind of idea of what uh, healthy masculinity should be like. Just yeah. a potent erection. Yeah. Um, or you have all sorts of different prosthetic yeah. add-ons, drugs, or yeah. anything that, yeah. in a, in a yeah. sense, alters our bodies and yeah. the way they are gendered. Yeah, yeah. So these these yeah. natural heterosexuals mm. are not even the but natural. That, is, <laughs> that yeah. is even with practices, right? You have right. A lot of porn that yeah, uh, exactly. a lot of people have not actual or whatever, if you can call that actual sex or not, but have sex mm, yeah. with. Yeah, with or with looking at porn movies, and mm. so there's yeah. there's all these technological add-ons as well to your yeah um, yeah to your reality yeah. yeah yeah yeah. So people are differently situated in different regimes of race, class, sexuality, technology, and are produced as different kinds of cyborgs. Then yeah, mm-hmm. according to the the technology and the stuff that's going on around them. Anybody got any other interesting examples? Anybody, anybody want to talk about? Well, I guess this, like, um, what you brought up, like yeah. sex toys, dildos, strap yeah. they trouble yeah. this, the idea yeah. of sexuality as yeah. determined by sex of object choice, because yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. instead, yeah. May, perhaps, why don't we yeah. classify people who have, like, really like doing strap on stuff or. Yeah. Mm. Like have a dildo fetish instead. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, absolutely, and that is something that transcends and crosses across any kind of attempt to make a clear homo hetero divide, isn't it? Absolutely, mm. we know 
we know that. People's practice mm -hmm. is far more complex, mm -hmm. right, yeah, yeah, and will always outstrip public notions of what's respectable, what, mm -hmm. what's kind of normal, what people are expected to do. You know that in practice, we know from the pornography, mm -hmm. from the sales of uh, equipment and stuff, that people's practice is way, way more complex than any simple kind of... Mm -hmm. yeah. If we could take outside this room, and something that I don't want to do, I absolutely don't want to privilege the university because I do believe profoundly that practice will always outstrip people's theorising and ideas. So I will never privilege the university and play into any kind of idea that, oh, in here we have all these fancy ideas about sex gender because we know, we've read all these books and the people out there, what do they know? We're not, we're not going to play into that because it's just not true. But if we could take away one thing that we wish we could communicate, what might it be? You might want to take a moment to reflect on that because that's a pretty big question. I'll give you mine. Mine would be, if I could communicate one thing, it would be... You, whoever I'm speaking to, you are way more complicated and so is everybody else than you even perhaps imagine. If you would just allow yourself to go there mm -hmm. and find that out, that would be the one thing I'd want to take. Mm -hmm. um, the Catholic Church in Italy is really, is really taken uh, issue with yeah. Gender theory in general yeah. is called calling it an ideology of gender yeah. that is just aiming to erase completely different yeah. between masculine and feminine. Yeah. So what I would like to communicate is that that's not what it's about. It's not about erasing yeah. the differences. Yeah. It's yeah. about showing that the differences don't have to be so categorical and so yeah. fixed. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, I I guess I'm gonna go with uh, this idea that the sex of whoever it is that mm. you want to be with doesn't is not the determinant of your yeah. identity mm. and yeah. to move beyond this uh, this back to yeah. biology and yeah. to yeah. you know be open with experimenting and yeah. without mm. the social stigma of yeah yeah yeah, yeah. naming and yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i think there are so many I feel like there's uh, there's so much anxiety for everyone around like with when it comes to sex but also gender and mm. anything and I think one thing that I would like to yeah. Yeah. out there is yeah. that uh, people don't ridic uh, ridicule uh, yeah. the importance of uh, sexual practice but right. gender mm. performance as well but take yeah. it, like um, don't make fun of gender like yeah, oh yeah, yeah you're talking about gender and you're, yeah. And you're, um, talking about trans and queer theory, yeah. but, but that they actually right. um, take it seriously because it is yeah. super. It is uh, yeah. it creates a like a reality yeah. and it is yeah. has real effects on everyone. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And a lot of violent effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, I guess like a big step for me was like thinking about my sexuality and my gender identity in terms of like how how I related to others and how I was constituted mm. and in turn I guess constituted others yeah. but other people not like categorical yeah, yeah. others yeah, yeah. Um, and so I guess would be like looking at looking at sexuality and gender in like less of a like singular or like uh, like person -cent like individual right. centered yeah. Yeah. Way and looking at the ways in which we can constitute and unravel each other and yeah and I don't know thinking more of flows and effects yeah. and things moving through around and between us rather yeah. than like a singular yeah. journey rather than that yeah. humanist yeah. Mm -hmm. let's start from that oh. yeah mm -hmm. yes. yeah the one you articulated that so yeah. much better yeah, yeah. <laughs> no that's yeah. good yeah um, for me as well to move away from the binary and right. not just create the other like right. the thirdness right. but like mm -hmm. just complete yeah. like, like what you said, that it's more complex. Right. Than right. Yeah. 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 We don't just want one, two, and then oh, everybody else. Everybody else yeah. into the other. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I had something similar. I yeah. was so afraid of ambiguities. Right. Thing moving away yeah. from categories we've always been socialized with. Yeah. But it is kind of okay because yeah. we are all about ambiguities anyway. Our, yeah. Our bodies are filled with them, so yeah. Quite accept that. Yeah. 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 
I mean, like, I I want to move away from the binary and mm-hmm. take the gender yeah. theory stuff I've yeah. learned from SOAS, like, and apply it in box some. We want to transform gender in these places. Yeah. We want to, well, like, no. um, hang on, maybe not. Maybe we don't. Yeah. yeah. That's not our job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I think that's where some contemporary analyses are really interesting. Um, there's quite a lot of uh, anthropological work which is trying to work right now uh, at both scales. It's working at the absolute macro scale of global geopolitics and looking at stuff like war on terror, like the production of this veiled Muslim woman who has to be rescued and unveiled, and looking at that in the ways in which it absolutely fractally connects down to the micro scale of how me and you interact and live our gender and our positionality as race, class, gendered subjects. I think the best work is trying to do that, to hold on to all those scales and see those interconnections and the ways in which those flows of violence and power um, are absolutely implicated with each other. Has anybody read anything like this that they want to throw in and go, oh yeah, that book, or that idea? Well, really good is now if he has poems. Uh, yeah. Homo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrorist assemblages. Yeah. Yes, we have poems. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we can do it. Even Kalili did a lot of uh, yeah. research on counterinsurgencies by yeah. looking at how, like, the policy level and then, you know, yeah. structures, like how yeah. soldiers interact with the local mm-hmm. populations on the ground yeah. and these gendered yeah. Yeah. power yeah. relations. Leila Apulomot has done on Bailey, yeah. so that's good. Yeah. And also rescuing the, the Arab Muslim women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some really exciting work out there. There's an interesting one. I don't know if anyone's written about it yet, but yeah. the, um, the 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 all female part of the Kurdish mm. uh, revolutionary yeah. army. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. And the fighting around that yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 That are yeah. actually fighting. You know, they say that they're mm. fighting for themselves first yeah, and foremost, yeah. Yeah. and then for the country. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's that's quite interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but also, yeah, yeah. No, I just thought that was super interesting because when that came up, that was such a, a fetish with that, like, yeah. Amazonian yeah, yeah. Yeah. warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Our kind of women, hey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have to watch that one. one. One of the people I have on Facebook is a member of the Emirati royal family, and he was posted this stupid thing that was just like, I wonder how ISIS feels about getting bombed by female fighter pilots and getting yeah, shot yeah. at by like female members of the fashion market. It's just like, you know what the Emirates is doing with I like, shut up. <laughs> but, 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 like, but like, that that's how it's being used. It, like, it obfuscates yeah. everything yeah. that like everyone yeah. else is doing. Yeah. And, like, yeah. Well, like, once again, like, their femininity becomes their identity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything else. Yeah.